it saw a great many injustices in 1936. It was the year of the bully. Japan bullied its way into China. Italy bullied its way into Ethiopia, bravely battling against spears and arrows with tanks and machine guns. Germany bullied its way into the Sudetenland, and Stanley Baldwin bullied a king from his throne. But you must believe me when I tell you that I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. Except for that last event, Edward's abdication, so many injustices prevailed, and the world seemed to have become immune to their effects. Hollywood was no more immune to a culture of injustice in 1936 than was the world, especially when it came to some choices made by the members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. I previously dealt with the choice of recipient for Best Supporting Actress 1936, which should have rightly been Alice Brady for My Man Godfrey. That injustice was rectified. Please see the Oscarized Gail Sondergaard for Alice Brady. I find an even greater injustice done to Humphrey Bogart, who wasn't even nominated Best Supporting Actor 1936 for his outstanding breakthrough film performance as Duke Mantee in The Petrified Forest. So we can all be quiet and peaceable and have a few beers together and listen to the music and not make any wrong moves. He created the role on the Broadway stage. Leslie Howard played the lead in that same production and was signed to repeat the role on film with Betty Davis. The studio had someone else in mind to play Duke Van Tee. After all, Warner Brothers was known for its roster of actors who were hired to play outlaws, gangsters, tough guys. So they had plenty to choose from. Why, asked the company, should we hire another actor when we have already so many actors to choose from now? Leslie Howard said, because if you don't hire Bogart, you don't get me. Leslie Howard, by the way, is probably best known by general film buffs, rather than serious classic film buffs, as uh, Ashley Wilkes in Gone with the Wind. Needless to say, with that threat, they hired Bogart, which turned out to be a very smart thing for Warner Brothers to have done, and it didn't do Bogart any harm either. Bogart was forever grateful to Leslie Howard for the actor's largesse. Leslie Howard died when the plane in which he was traveling was shot down by the German Luftwaffe in 1943. The Germans thought the reported VIP in the plane was Churchill. It was Leslie Howard. Nine years later, in August 1952, Humphrey Bogart and his wife, actress Lauren Bacall, had a baby girl. They named Leslie, in honor of the actor, whose generosity was never forgotten. However, if you are a true classical movie buff, this story is no news to you. Anyway, I do have some hesitation in giving another award to Bogart. I already de-Oscarized Paul Lucas so that Bogart could get the Best Actor award that he so rightfully deserved for Casablanca. And who can disagree with that? You look at the nominees then for 1936 and Best Supporting Actor and you gotta wonder, where is Bogart? And frankly, Walter Brennan suffers the fate of Olivia de Havilland. Please see de Oscarize Olivia de Havilland. Of having given a pretty good performance, but in a rather dated film. Although, Francis Farmer's performance in Come and Get It is much more interesting and energized than Walter Brennan's rather pedestrian, yet professional portrayal as a second banana helping the rather tired, intricate plot to keep going. Now, look at Bogart's electrifying portrayal of a desperate, violent man on the run, but risking everything, his freedom, his life for love. Check out the nominees here and tell me I'm wrong. Walter Brennan, come and get it as Swan Bostrom. Misha Auer, My Man Godfrey, as Carlo. Stuart Irwin, Pink Skin Parade, as Amos Dodd. Basil Rathbone, Romeo and Juliet, as Tybalt. Akim Tamirov, The General Died at Dawn, 
as General Yang. This is what I mean by the members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences committing a series of injustices. All these performances are just as good today as they were then, yet look who got snubbed by the Academy in 1936. Humphrey Bogart, The Petrified Forest, as Duke Mantee. Spencer Tracy, Libeled Lady, as Warren Haggerty. Great comedic performance by Tracy here, playing second banana to two other great comedic performances by William Powell and Gene Harlow. The members snubbed Tracy for this performance. Maybe it's because his fellow members were jealous, because Tracy was the one and the only one that got that treasured big new long-term contract that year from MGM. <laughs> Then it was the kidnapping. What's the gag this time? Darling, there's no gag. The newspaper has made a terrible mistake. Yeah, well, so has little Gladys. Engaged to a newspaper man. Joe Simpson never treated me like this. Then why did you divorce him? I've asked myself that plenty of times. Oh, now, Gladys, after all, you got no cake. Oh, I haven't. First you said a trip to Bermuda. You went to Bermuda? Yeah, but alone. Then it was Europe. Huh. If I wait another year, it'll be little America. Well, I won't. Look, hey, didn't they tell you I wanted to see you? Say, what is this? Do I own a paper or a lunatic asylum? Huh. You just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Get rid of this woman. Hey, hey, take it easy, will you? That's the owner of the paper. Well, I don't care who he is. Nobody can talk to me like a house detective. How do you know how a house detective talks? Don't you think I read? Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. Take a look at the man who killed Abe Lincoln. The greatest man who ever lived. Look at him. Warner Baxter, the prisoner of Shark Island as Dr. Samuel Mudd. This was an excellent performance by a great early talking film perennial, Warren Baxter. You probably know him from 42nd Street if you are a classic film connoisseur at all. I don't know if the story of Dr. Mudd was historically inaccurate at the time this was filmed. As the years have gone by, documentation has been discovered that Dr. Samuel Mudd may not have been as innocent as is portrayed in this film, directed by the great John Ford. Now, that alone is worth a look if you actually haven't seen The Prisoner of Shark Island. Granted, it is a lesser known work and perhaps inferior to other Ford films, but by no means inferior to all. And it was made during Ford's time with Daryl F. Zanuck at 20th Century when they made some great pictures together. They made The Grapes of Wrath, which should have won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1940 instead of Rebecca, an injustice that has since been rectified on this very site. Please see Rebecca de Oscarized. At any rate, I believe Warner Baxter should have at least been nominated by the members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for his performance in The Prisoner of Shark Island. Perhaps the members were just kind of getting their sea legs when it came to sorting out this new supporting actor, supporting actress category. Nevertheless, I believe most of their nominations were unjustified when compared to some of the performances that were snubbed by members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. The whole idea of Deoscarize is to finally give credit where credit and awards are rightfully due. Speaking of which, the fact that Walter Brennan did not receive Best Supporting Actor awards for Sergeant York, My Darling Clementine, The Pride of the Yankees, Red River, or Bad Day at Black Rock, yet one for unmemorable films like Kentucky and Come and Get It, only adds to the premise that great films and great film performances, still admired to this day, went unrewarded and therefore unawarded in their time denied by a cold, cruel community of ego-sapping neurotics and sadists known as the Hollywood film community. This is the place where finally they get the recognition they so richly deserve by discerning, disinterested, yet passionately informed and dedicated fans of classical films, namely you and I. So until I hear a compelling argument to prevent this from happening, I hereby declare Walter Brennan de-Oscarized and Humphrey Bogart is the new Best Supporting Actor 1936 for The Petrified Forest. He should have won it then. If you want to remove the bad part of coffee, 
you decaffeinate. If you want to remove the offending aroma from a room, you deodorize. And if you want to give the award issued by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to a more deserving recipient, you must de-Oscarize the current holder. <laughs>